uh, Jeremy, the private fleet driver here. I uh, just thought I'd make a quick little video. Um, I've had some requests since my last video. I was planning on doing it Monday, but I broke down and I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs, caught up on my Netflix and Hulu. Thought I might as well go ahead and do the video now while I wait for the service truck to come and fix my truck, making that intention pay. Anyway, uh, the three things that everybody said that they want to hear about is pay. Even though I've already done a video on pay, I'm going to do a little bit more of an update one. Break it down a little bit and even give you all some access to some pay stubs if you want to look at them just for verification. I know how some drivers are. Yeah, everybody says they make good money, but I want to show proof. I'm not going to say anything that's not true. Um, just before I go into this whole spiel, I just want to get it out there that I am not an official spokesperson for Hobby Lobby. Um, I do not get paid to do this. I am not part of the recruiting team. I'm a driver out here pounding the pavement just like you. Yes, I do get a referral bonus, but if you've watched any of my other videos, that is not why I do this. It has absolutely nothing to do with the money. Just, I enjoy doing it and enjoy making videos and getting that information out there where it wasn't available when I was looking for it. I wouldn't waste my time doing interviews and finding out information about Walmart and Dollar General and stuff like that if I was doing it for the money. Because I get absolutely nothing from those other companies. And I'm not going to push you to go to Hobby Lobby unless Hobby Lobby is going to work for you. Because that does me absolutely no good. It wastes your time and it wastes Hobby Lobby's time. I'm not going to do that. I refuse to do that. I'm going to point you in the direction of of the company that I feel will work best for you in your situation. If you're a guy that refuses to run team and you want to run solo and you want to work for a private fleet where you're going to make good money and it doesn't matter if you're home on weekends, I'm going to push you towards Walmart. So it just all depends on what you want to drive for. But the three topics or our, our safety department and what, what they're picky on at Hobby Lobby, uh, driver qualifications, and pay. So I'm going to, in the next video, I'm going to cover um, driver qualifications in our safety department. That'll follow here in just a minute, and then I'll do a break, and then I'll do pay. The reason I'm breaking this up is because I'm waiting for road breakdown, and they could be calling me at any time. Every time they call me, I got to redo the whole video. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here, and I'll be right back with safety and driver qualifications. Hey, everybody. I'm back here. A little bit, a little break there. Just a few minutes, a few seconds, a millisecond for you. Anyway, requirements for a driver. Of course, you have to have your Class A CDL. You have to have one year verifiable cross-country driving experience with a van or a reefer. So if you've hauled a rock truck, around your state, you're not going to qualify. You have to have over-the-road, verifiable tractor-trailer experience. One year is what they require. If you live in the Oklahoma City, Dallas area, in between Oklahoma City and Dallas, and you have over six months driving experience, definitely give them a call because they will hire some drivers with six months experience if they're going to pair you with somebody that's got more like years of experience. They might pair you with somebody that's been driving for four or five years. So if you live in the in between the Oklahoma and Dallas area, there's a really good chance that they can find a driver to pair you up with. So don't not call because of that. Um, if you live outside of that area, it doesn't hurt if you've got over six months experience to go ahead and put your application in. There might be somebody in your area that is needing a co-driver. And if they've got over, you know, a year or two experience, they might put you with them. They just will not put you, they, they won't hire you into the pool unless you have one year driving experience, unless they have somebody already set up to set you up with. Okay, clean MVR and good CSA. I had a buddy of mine, we talked a lot. I talked, started talking to him, uh, Fernando, started talking to him when he went to truck driving school. He went to truck driving school. I recommended Warner. He did Warner Dedicated. Um, I think he did Dollar General. I can't remember. But he went to Warner, and he did Warner for a while. And then 
he was going to come to Hobby Lobby, and they turned him down because he had a little non, no damage, no ticket, no DOT reported, reportable, little, I think he brushed a pole or something going around the corner. And because that was on his record within the last couple months, they wouldn't hire him. So Hobby Lobby does not just hire anybody. They want somebody that is going to be a good professional driver. They want somebody that has lots of driving experience. And they want somebody who is safe, has no CSA points. They, they don't, I mean, if you had a speeding ticket, five over, maybe even ten over, two years ago or three years ago, they might work with you. But if you're a fairly new driver and in the first month, couple months driving, you had a fender bender, they're not going to hire you. They hire only safe drivers. So I just wanted to get that out. Make sure you're up front with them about everything before you go through the headache of everything. Tell them what's on your record, even if you don't think it's anything or you don't even think it's on your record. Tell them about it. Um, but those are pretty much the qualifications. Um, you got your doubles endorsement doubles and triples that's a benefit because we're starting i'm seeing more and more doubles and triples routes but that's not that's not a requirement you don't have to have that but anyway that that's driver qualifications and safety um they just want you to be safe um they're very big on downhill speed they do not want you to go over 70 miles an hour even on the downhill it doesn't matter whether it's 75 miles an hour speed limit or 80 mile an hour speed limit don't go over 70 74 is pushing. They don't want you going over 70. So you got to be on the brake, on the jake, you know, and keep it 70 or below. Our governors on our truck are set 70. They don't want you going over 70. And it will, the, our Omni tracks, this system right here will pop up and tell you when you got an overspeed violation. And then you'll get a call from safety the next day wanting to know why you were doing 80 miles an hour down the mountain. You don't want that call because they don't take that lightly and they've let people go for that, you know. So that, that's the big thing that they're big on is just being safe um, and not going down hills over 70 miles an hour. It's a big thing to them. Okay, like I said in my past video, take a little break here, uh, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to break down pay. I'm going to show you what a typical pay week, may, doing 4,700 miles, because that's what they guarantee you when you hire on here. But as I'll say in the next video, most all routes are built around 5,000 miles a week, but they guarantee you 40, so your minimum that you have to run is 4,700 miles a week as a team, minimum. But my route's 6,300. So it all depends on how hard you want to run and what kind of route you want, what kind of home time you want. But I'll break that down on based on a 47 mile, 4,700 mile route per week. That way you can see the bare minimum that you would make here. And then I'll show you a few pay stubs and kind of go over what I make on a weekly basis. Hope everybody's having a good night and I will see you on the next segment here in this video. Hey everyone, Private Fleet Driver here. I am back with the last portion of this video. Um, it was going to be a few minutes, ended up being a few days, ended up broke down for 12 hours dealing with the record and getting the part and all that. And then my co-driver got up, so I didn't get a chance to finish the pay side of the video. The screenshot that you got before this video, that is broke down at 4,700 miles a week. That is the minimum that we have to run, 4,700 miles a week. Like I said in the last video, my route is 6,300 miles. Um, another guy that I'm going to show you a pay stub on, somebody that, a buddy of mine that gave me permission to use his pay stub. It was actually his idea. Um, 
he's running around 6,000 miles a week. So you'll be able to see two different pace sets from two different people on two different routes. Just to kind of give you an idea. Um, most of the routes are built around 5,000 miles, but that breakdown, I did 4,700. So you'll know that that is the minimum that you will make. And more than likely, really good chance, especially if you have pretty good driving stamina and y'all are okay with running good miles, you're going to make way more than this. And this is not counting bonuses and all that. So the way it is, is the starting pay right now um, is 28 cents per mile. For any dispatch that is less than 100, 900 miles to the first stop. 30 cents per mile for every dispatch that is more than 900 miles to the first store. So, typically the routes are built where you have one long route, which is 30 cents per mile. And then you have one short route, which is 28 cents per mile. Um, and that, you know, in my case, I run a doubles route at the beginning of the week. Then I run a short route at at the 28 cents per mile and then I run a long route at the 30 cents per mile. Uh, my cents per mile pays a little bit higher than that because I got my seniority pay, which you get a half a cent raise every year that you're here. So every year on your anniversary day, you get another half a cent raise. So that's based on 4,700 miles. So I broke it down as in 3,000 miles as being over the 900 miles. So at 30 cents a mile equals $900. Then I did 1,700 miles at the 28 cents per mile equals $476. That equaled your shorter route, which is about 1,376. Then you figure in your stop pay, which we get $17 a stop if you're a team, $34 a stop if you are solo. So... You know, I run on a team route, so we both get the $17. And everybody gets every mile the truck, both drivers on the truck get every mile that truck turns and every stop that that truck makes. Both drivers. So that seems like really low mileage pay, but for a team, it's not really that bad at all. Pretty much you're getting 60 cents. The truck is getting 60 cents a mile on the long stuff. And you're running at least 4,700 miles. So it's still really good money. So with $68 in stop pay, I'm figuring two stores that you deliver to and then two back calls that you pick up to and bring back to the yard. So I'm figuring in four stops at $17, which is $68, which brings your total to $1,444. That's for one week. And we get paid every two weeks, so times that by two, and that's what your gross will be every week. That Based on 4,700 miles, I promise you're probably going to run way more than that. But I wanted to do this at the minimum that you're going to make because I didn't want to, you know, make it look like you're going to come over here and just knock it out of the park because there's no guarantee of that. But this is the minimum that you will make here. It's also not counting any kind of breakdown pay. We get, I just found out in my 12 hours breakdown after talking to my dispatcher that our breakdown and detention pay used to be uh, 15, 15 40 an hour, and now it is $17 an hour. So anything over, let's see. Okay, weather and breakdown after the first hour, you start making $17 an hour, non-capped, as long as you're sitting there. So I sat there for almost 13 hours. So I got 12 hours of breakdown pay at $17 when I was sitting there in Clinton, Iowa. So um, a store after the second hour, you start making $17 an hour. Most of the stores will get you unloaded within two hours, occasionally three hours. So you get an extra $17 for sitting there that extra third hour. Um, back call, anything after the second hour. So you get two hours as part of your time. And then after that, you start making $17 an hour on back calls. And that is non-capped. So I'm going to also put that at the end of this video so you can screenshot it, that breakdown that I did, so you can kind of look at it a little bit better. Um, if you want to screenshot it and then go back and look at it or whatever, um, I'll put it at the end of this video also just as a reference. There's also going to be two pay stubs back there. One will be mine and one is a friend of mine on a different route on a different truck. So you can kind of see two different drivers. 
Um, he started, I'd say probably a year after I did, maybe six years to a year, six months to a year. I can't remember exactly when he started, but he started after I did. So that'll give you an idea of what he's making on his route. Also, some of the other things, this is kind of more goes into benefits and I'll do a benefits video tent again too, just to kind of refresh everything, but just to kind of hit it really quick. Uh, you also get a safety bonus every quarter, which is paid at one cent per every mile the truck ran in that quarter. That's if you didn't have any tickets or uh, incident, any kind of incidents or anything like that. Um, they can even take your safety bonus away if you get an overspeed downhill. So you don't, you don't, you want to keep it under 70 going downhill, like I said in the other video. So, and that's one cent per every mile. So if you ran a 4,700 mile per week, which I'm promising you it's going to be more than 4,700 miles, um, that's $564 every quarter that they just cut a check and it's in your box and it's just a nice little chunk of change in your pocket. Holiday, holiday pay, we get holiday pay. It's, uh, your holiday bonus is paid out at $100 for every year you've been here. So if you've been here 25 years, you're going to get a $2,500 Christmas bonus. If you've been here two years, you're going to get a $200 Christmas bonus. Um, it's really cool. It's thoughtful. It comes in a card. It comes from the Green family. It's it's I, I think it's really neat that, that they do that because they don't have to do that. We also normally have, I don't know what COVID and what it's going to be like this year with COVID, but we normally have a big Christmas party where all the drivers are invited to at embassy suites in norman oklahoma and they'll provide you for a room if you don't live local and they give us a big dinner and give away a bunch of door prizes and uh, you can bring your wife and it's it's just a really good time and that's typically when they give you the christmas bonuses so uh, holiday pay um mine averages about 334 dollars for every holiday you get paid for the holiday whether you're working or not, as long as you went on the dispatch before your holiday and your dis your regular dispatch after the holiday, you'll get the pay, which um, I'm not really sure how it's figured. I'm thinking it's probably around a cent. I, I think it's a percentage of what you make, like a percentage of what your average, like your last 90 days, what you make daily, your average daily is what you get which is mine is normally around $300. So um, I think, in the, and I think what it is is it's paid out at 39 and some change dollar an hour. And then they pay you eight hours for that holiday. So it's not, mine's normally around $330. And that's just brass for every holiday. You know, you just get that on your next check. But anyway, I hope that covered. If you have any questions about pay or how it works or what you're really making, like I said, I'm putting a couple of pay subs on here, so I'm not blowing smoke. I promise. Um, like I said, I make a little bit more than what I did in this example, and you'll see the other driver pay stub that is on there. He makes quite a bit more also, and he's on a different route doing whole different thing i think he runs springfield at the beginning of the week or end of the week i can't remember and then he runs oregon the other part of the week so um he turns some miles also but anyway that gives you an idea um remember if you got anything absolutely anything out of this video please subscribe every time there's a new video it'll pop up and tell you as I've said in my other videos, if there's any topics that you want me to do, that's where I got the idea to do this pay video. I had like three or four people telling me, hey, do another pay video, do another pay video. And I had a request for a video on uh, CBs, if I still use a CB, and I might try to do put together a CB video. I do do I do use my CB on a regular basis. But anyway, uh, click the subscribe button. Like the video, click on that little bell, it'll tell you whenever I have a new video. And remember, if you're coming to Hobby Lobby and you want to put in an application, put me down as a reference. Uh, typically, anybody that emails me, anybody that's emailed me in the last couple of weeks, I've had several emails from people. I typically give you my cell phone number and tell you to just text me if you have any more questions.
or call me because I drive days. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions about Hobby Lobby or any private fleet driving for private fleet. Anyway, I hope everybody has a great day, and I'm sorry that this video was so long and dragged out, but I hope this answers some questions for everybody, and if I missed anything, let me know, and I will cover it in the next video. Hope everybody has a great week. Thanks.